Hello, this is Kenya Podcast Preacher, and I want to welcome you back to Deep Waters. This podcast is brought to you by Applied Strengths Ministry, where we believe working together in our strengths is the effect of working out the will and calling of God in our lives. The title of this message is, The Clock Will Stop. This is a multi-episode series in which this is episode four of four. So perhaps you caught that I've already answered some of the why questions that you asked at the beginning of the message, and I did, you know tossing out God and all that kind of stuff. But there is a big picture why, a national big picture. Keep in mind, we the people pick our leaders, and if we are weak or baby Christians, then we will not have the heart of God for who should be in office. But even that doesn't totally matter if we keep God at the forefront of everything we do as a nation. So this nation is almost unrecognizable from our beginnings as it relates to how we function day to day. We have Christians following the devil, and they don't even know it. Families, marriages, gender issues, the massive proliferation of the porn industry, and its presence on regular TV and in all social media sites, with the exception of a few. Yes, I left a loophole just to see who would raise their hand. Out of control debt, fractured economy, I could go on, but I would just be repeating the nightly news to you, and I'm not interested in doing that. The point is we are unequivocally in the grasps of something other than the initial promised protection of God. Now we get to the other wise. We have slowly asked God to leave, thus incurring the curse associated with the absence or rejection of God. The impact or current state of affairs speaks against us and convicts us of our many sins before the throne of God. Another why is that for some reason, known or unknown, peeps walk away from God when encountering his blessings for some unknown but certain amount of time. In one sense, we could blame our straying from God on his blessings, but then that judgment would be misplaced, and we would only serve to excuse our sinful behavior. Jesus didn't walk away, did he? Many of the early believers didn't walk away. Billy Graham didn't walk away, so it must just be the majority of us. Now I say this because if you go back to when there was a nation crossing the desert to enter into the promises of God, only a handful of peeps actually made it in. Why so few? Moses gave them an encouraging word upon his departure. Perhaps they could have just blamed him for their walking away from God. Deuteronomy 31, 27, 29. For I know your rebellion and your stiff neck. If today, while I am yet alive with you, you have been rebellious against the Lord, then how much more after my death? For I know that after my death you will become utterly corrupt and turn aside from the way which I have commanded you. And evil will befall you in the latter days, because you will do evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger through the work of your hands. Okay, so, but wait, let's go back to Numbers and see why so many didn't make it to their promise and purpose. Numbers 14, then the Lord said to Moses, how long will these people reject me? And how long will they not believe me? With all the signs which I have performed among them, I will strike them with pestilence and disinherit them. And I will make of you a nation greater and mightier than they. And Moses said to the Lord, then the Egyptians will hear it. For by your might you brought these people up from among them, and they will tell it to the inhabitants of this land. They have heard that you, Lord, are among these people, that you, Lord, are seen face to face, and your cloud stands above them, and you go before them in a pillar of cloud by day and in a pillar of fire by night. Now if you kill these people as one man, then the nations which have heard of your fame will speak, saying, Because the Lord was not able to bring this people to the land, which he swore to give to them. Therefore he killed them in the wilderness. And now I pray, let the power of my Lord be great, just as you have spoken, saying, The Lord is long-suffering and abundant in mercy, forgiving inequity and transgression. But he, by no means, clears the guilty visiting the inequity of the fathers on the children to the third and fourth generation. Pardon the inequity of this people, I pray, according to the greatness of your mercy. 
just as you have forgiven this people from Egypt, even until now. Then the Lord said, I have pardoned according to your word, but truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. Because all these men who have seen my glory and the signs which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness and have put me to the test now these ten times and have not heeded my voice, they certainly shall not see the land of which I swore to their fathers, nor shall any of those who rejected me see it. But my servant Caleb, because he has a different spirit in him and has followed me fully, I will bring into the land where he went, and his descendants shall inherit it. Now the Amalekites and the Canaanites dwell in the valley. Tomorrow turn and move out into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. Verse 26, And the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, saying, How long shall I bear with this evil congregation who complain against me? I have heard the complaints which the children of Israel make against me. Say to them as I live says the Lord, just as you have spoken in my hearing, so I will do to you. The carcasses of you who have complained against me shall fall in this wilderness, all of you who were numbered, according to your entire number, from twenty years old and above, except for Caleb the son of Jophim and Joshua the son of Nun. You shall by no means enter the land which I swore I would make you dwell in, but your little ones whom you have said would be victims I will bring in, and they shall know the land which you have despised. But as for you, your carcasses shall fall in this wilderness. The other day I told someone that God has a line. And even more importantly, we must see that although God has declared that, no swears that you will receive the promise from him, no, but look, you shall by no means enter the land which I swore I would make you dwell in. Your continued rejection of him could cause him to break his swear to you. Now we can go back even further and say that this mess was the fault of just ten faithless and rebellious guys. I won't read it, but you can see it in Numbers chapter 13. But you see, that won't fly either, because if it wasn't in them, they wouldn't have come into agreement with those ten guys. It looks like the issue remains within each of us. And but so also does the choice to stay with him forever, never to reject him. In finishing, I would say that if we do not turn as a nation, the same as Israel did at one time or the other, before they decided not to turn from their wicked ways, then we will continue to see what we are currently seeing, and probably way worse. Now I hear some of you saying, but wait, Ken, what about the worshiping of demons, or as some call it, other gods? Well, God called it that, so I guess we should find out how to build an engine that can power a whole nation away from God while knowingly but due to spiritual deafness and blindness, heads for the cliff anyhow. Now, Jonathan Cain wrote a book titled The Return of Gods. That book answers the question in just under 250 pages of, I can't put this book down to eat experience. It is a great book. His last name is spelled C-A-H-N. I'm only about halfway through it, and I am moved to my core as I believe we as a church could do something to prevent the complete and total collapse of America as we know it, or as it was birthed over 200 years ago. I default to his book to do the heavy lifting, as it is his calling and purpose to do so. My purpose is to teach and prepare one for ministry. I get nothing from Jonathan to endorse his books. It is time to be sober-minded and engage in this battle. We can return to picnics and circuses later. Nope, not on my watch. If we don't have a God response to our current state of affairs, we could be the generation of Gentiles that ushers in the beginning of the times and or fullness of the Gentiles. Luke 21, 24. And they will fall by the edge of the sword and be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem will be trampled by the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. Romans 11:25. For I do not desire, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own opinion, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. I know that many of my listeners want revival and believe we will see it soon, and I am with you all the way. But I am also compelled to look at the signs of our times and consider our state of affairs. If revival doesn't come, 
what will we do? That's a great question. We personally go before God and ensure we are daily cleansed in the blood of Jesus. Then we continue to allow others to equip us for the work of ministry, and then we get to making disciples that remain. Then we enter into a ministry and calling as we are released to do so. We pray for our leaders and against principalities that have been invited to cohabitate with us on our own home. Well, that's it for today and for this message series. Remember to pick up a copy of Jonathan Kahn's book titled The Return of the Gods. Be prepared to be stretched. Although this stuff has always been in the Bible, the timing of this information should move the church body to quick action. If it truly is a warning from God, and I believe it is, we should be found doing His will before He packs His last bag. Remember, it's not what you find wrong or disagree with regarding these messages, but what you can take away from it. Together we can do more to impact the kingdom than if we work alone. Let's flip the script and kill, steal, and destroy the works of the enemy and create space for the light of life to shine through into people's lives. Find a seat and click on the like and subscribe button. Let's build this ministry together. Thanks and see you next time in deep waters.